Baseball defending champs, the Houston Astros. Your Houston Astros taking charge of the Minnesota Twins from their really first at bat. Jose Altuve getting a single right off Sonny Gray. I mean, look at that stacked house. And let's just start off hot. Boom. I mean, from start to finish, it really was there. First RBI of the postseason, pitcher Christian Javier threw nine strikeouts, five scoreless innings. Astros went nine to one. They move within one win for a seventh consecutive AL championship appearance. Javier got in some trouble. We had to make a decision on what we were leave him in there or go to somebody else. But he he came through the guy. You know he can he can smell a victory or he can smell when I'm about to take him out. <laughs> and so um, that's happened four or five times. So um, but it was just good to come here. And, uh, and win this game today. Game four, target field today. And if the Twins can force game five, it'll be in Houston on Friday. But speaking of Texas baseball, the Brooms are out in Arlington after the Texas Rangers completed their sweep of the one seed Baltimore Orioles, seven to one. Fascinating sequence of events. The Orioles had one of the highest regular season finishes. They had 101 wins, while the Rangers fell to a wild card spot on the last day of the regular season. This is the Rangers' first ALCS appearance since 2011. They now wait and see who will win between the Astros or the Twins. And really hoping Astros-Rangers get a little Texas rivalry going. Wow. No. Who would have ever thought that? I mean, it's baseball in Texas. We take it seriously. Uh, I know. Adam Kasky is kind of upset. His mm. twins aren't there. RJ Marquez had a great point earlier. He said, thank goodness for the Rangers because it takes some of the, uh, the negative spotlight off of the Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. <laughs> Wow. Still ahead in the next half hour. This is also awesome. We're three days away hey. from a solar eclipse. Why looking at it, though, without eye protection could permanently damage your eye. I have the science next. Are you ready? All right, special glasses, homemade cereal box viewers that Sarah Spivey made for us. Right now, it is time to gear up for the annual solar eclipse on Saturday. And without it, there's a good chance, a solid chance, that you'll destroy some of your vision. This is true, and there is science behind the danger. We get it from the experts. Called solar retinopathy, where the sun's rays are so strong that they actually um, create scars and burn the retina permanently. That's what it's called, but what exactly happens to your naked eye if you fail to protect it from the sun's rays, particularly while trying to enjoy the solar eclipse? So there's a two lens system and think of it like a magnifying glass, like when, you know, like when we're all little kids when we go out into the sun and use a magnifying glass to burn a hole in a piece of tissue paper or something like that. We have lenses inside our eye that's doing the same thing. So the first lens encounters the bright sun, then magnifies it to the second, creating basically a burn spot or arc in your vision. It's not so much just looking at the eclipse, it's the idea that you're staring and waiting for it to happen. That's when the damage usually occurs, and unfortunately, if you're not wearing glasses like this, the damage you do to your eye can be permanent. So as, as the moon is coming across, there's this, you know, half a moon or semicircle that we're looking at to see like, oh, cool, we're starting to see the shadow occur. But during that time when it's coming across, part of the sun is not blocked. And that is the portion that can actually do damage. The damage can appear like a dark spot or more likely an arc with this type of eclipse. Special polarized glasses won't protect you, just something called ISO approved filtered lenses will. First of all, they're extremely dark, right? I mean, if you put these, if you put these on, it's like you can barely see. I can actually in this room, I can't see anything. So they're so dark, you can't see anything other than looking at the eclipse. Okay, so on Saturday, beginning at 9 a.m., we're going to start our coverage of the eclipse right here on KSAT 12. Using these specific glasses, they're being given out for free at a number of locations. In fact, Parkhurst Vision Center is partnering with the zoo on Saturday morning. If you want to go there to watch, it starts at 9 o'clock, and they're going to be giving away about 1,000 pairs of these ISO-approved glasses to the first 1,000 or so people who show up. If you want to see more of our stories leading up to the big event, all you have to do is scan the QR code on your screen, and you can find everything you need to know on KSAT.com. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 
Oh, you, you don't need these glasses today. You really don't need any sunglasses today, Mia. <laughs> nope, and you know, oh, thank you, Ursula. Oh, so got kind. a nice little prop here. I would say I'm gonna try and put them on, but I don't even think I'm gonna see. see yeah, you can't, you can't see anything when you're actually in the studio. You so that's one out. way to test. There you go. No sunglasses. No sunglasses. She's right. This really is so important leading up to the annual eclipse on Saturday for every reason that she just said. Make sure you have those glasses, and especially for your kids. If you know that you're gonna be outside, you have a soccer game, you have anything where those kids are gonna be outside and they could just glance up at the sun when people are starting to say, oh, look what's happening. Make sure you have those glasses handy. All right, here's a little factoid for you about the eclipse. We've had a lot of people ask, what does annular even mean? Well, annulus is actually Latin for ring. And with this eclipse that is the ring of fire, the moon's a little bit smaller than the sun in this instance. So when it moves in front of the sun, that's when we see the ring of fire take shape. And by the way, here's when the peak of the eclipse is expected to get going on Saturday near Rock Springs, Carta Valley Junction by about 11.58. a.m. 1152 to 1153 here in San Antonio, stretching over to Hondo, Batesville, as well as Uvalde, Floresville, Pleasanton by about 1155. That stretches over to Catula and Tilden. It will continue to move farther off to the southeast down the I-37 corridor closer to the noon hour. Now we will feel more like fall on Saturday. It is possible we have to monitor for a few lingering clouds, especially south and west of San Antonio, but overall good viewing conditions and it also will be a little windy. We'll have more details on that coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Just in, Republicans have nominated Representative Steve Scalise to be the next House Speaker. So this decision comes after Representative Kevin McCarthy was ousted from his post. The Associated Press saying House Republicans pushed aside Representative Jim Jordan in favor of Scalise. He's the current majority leader. Republicans will now seek to assemble their narrow House majority around Scalise in what is certain to be a close vote of the full House. Put it in perspective, he will need 217 votes on the floor to be the speaker. Making headlines, the state of Texas could be one step closer toward approving a school voucher program. Members of the Senate Education Committee voting yesterday to advance the idea. It would give Texas parents access to $8,000 a year for education savings accounts. That money is what families could use to pay for things like tuition, uniforms, and other expenses. Critics say this will hurt the state's public education system since private schools do not have to accept every student. Lawmakers are working on the proposal during their third special legislative session. Now for some consumer news, the Federal Trade Commission taking on what is sometimes called junk fees. Those uh, are those fees that are not necessarily disclosed by businesses up front. It would also prevent a swath of businesses, including event ticketing providers to provide uh, things like hotels and concert tickets from levying unexpected service charges. And speaking of service charges, the USPS, the Postal Service, suggesting a 2% or 2 cent increase in the price of a first class mail forever stamp. Also proposing an increase in prices for special service products like those that include certified mail, post office box rental fees, money order fees, and the cost of purchase insurance when you are mailing an item. Now, the Postal Regulatory Commission, they say that they still have to review the price changes first, but if they are approved, these new price changes would take effect January 21st. A lot more to come here on the News at Noon. How long construction is expected to last at the San Antonio Airport as they begin an exciting new time period on their new ground loading facility? But first, this. Oh. That's a pumpkin, That's and it's the world's funny. largest one ever. How much it weighs and what it took to get it this size. That's a basketball on the pumpkin. Did you That's see that? All right, as we've been saying, Halloween right around the corner, and, well, a lot of people getting ready. Take a look at this. This is the biggest pumpkin on earth. That's, That's a, a <laughs> basketball. Look at that for reference. It's fantastic. Unbelievable. Okay. This weighs more than 2,700 pounds. <laughs> and Danny New spoke with the, was the man who was able to grow it. Two, seven, four, nine. 
2,749 pounds, your new world record for the heftiest pumpkin ever. That's heavier than a fully grown bison, a 2010 Honda Civic, and about 270 regular-sized pumpkins. I was like, are you, what? Minnesota's Travis Ginger says that his behemoth first pollinated back in June, and since it's 2023... Jordan to the circle, puts the shot in the air, good! He decided to name it after number 23, Michael Jordan. I've been the whole night waiting for the great pumpkin. It's almost unfathomable, but Travis says over the summer, Michael Jordan grew up to 70 pounds a day. And here's the secret. He drank more than 120 gallons of water a day. Yeah, they're 98% water. And once MJ hit a circumference of 21 feet, Travis knew this one had a shot to break a world record and win the Safeway World Championship pumpkin way off in Half Moon Bay, California. I did this in my backyard. So last week, Travis and friends used a tractor to load Michael Jordan into his trailer, and then we know what happened next. Half Moon Bay is in the record books. That's a world record! Travis won $30,000 for the top prize, but he says he's ready to memorialize a different number, 2749. You need to get that tattooed somewhere? Yeah, right? (laughs) That's what I said. We got to go out and get matching tattoos to my wife. (laughs) Up next, Travis says he's arranging to now break the Guinness World Record for the largest pumpkin carving ever. You would need like a chainsaw to cut that pumpkin, right? In New York for ABC News, I'm Danny New. I'm guessing they took the $30,000 they won and paid their water bill. Oh, That's fair. A hun- that. 120 gallons of water a day? That is insane. Yeah, uh-huh. very, very large. I was happy that they threw in the little Charlie Brown reference, though. Very, very cool. And yes, definitely spooky season, definitely pumpkin season today. It is feeling like it. So far, our high temperature is 72, but of course we will climb a bit more as we get towards the peak heating time of day. We'll see how many peaks of sunshine, breaks in the cloud cover we can find. Even warmer tomorrow, even more so on Friday, but then we see that next cold front send another batch of fall air into south central Texas. We've talked about afternoon highs, but just how cool could those morning lows get? We'll tell you after the break. We hinted about this yesterday, but now we want to show you some of the changes that are in store for the San Antonio International Airport. So big groundbreaking on the airport's new ground load facility happening yesterday. Let's take a look. This is what it's going to, well, there's the groundbreaking. Everyone's very excited, but, you know, you put a shovel in the dirt. I want to see the actual blueprints because there's a space for passengers to board planes from outside the airport on the ground. I think that's what it is. There we go. Beautiful. They say the project. It's going to make flying in and out of San Antonio more efficient and more accessible. As airlines arrive in those five positions that will be available at a ground load facility, they'll be able to embark and disembark not just from the main door but from the back door. So we're taking passengers on the aircraft and off the aircraft twice as fast. A $20 million project being funded through grants from the Federal Aviation Administration. And the project set to be complete around 2025. And we're hoping 2023 ends on a very wet note. Yes. To make up for all the drought that we've had for two years. Yes, the uh, triple digit La Nina that we were dealing with. Thankfully, we did see some decent rains earlier this year in the spring months, but we know that it has just been an incredibly hot summer and finally we were able to get our first kind of round of cooler fall weather in last weekend and today it's not all that bad thanks to the cloud cover that we have in place 73 degrees now over at sa international winds out of the east southeast at about 5 to even 15 miles per hour at times 70 in new Braunfels, 71 on the south side of bear county at stinson it's 70 in hondo lost maples Still holding on to the 60s right now, as well as Bernie, currently at about 68 degrees. Now, I do think as we start to see a few more peaks of sunshine return into this Wednesday afternoon, temperatures will be able to climb a bit more around 77 degrees right now. The forecast temperature by 3 o'clock, and then I think we'll top off closer to 78. And then if you're stepping out for any Wednesday evening plans, we'll gradually see those temperatures fall into the mid 70s and eventually into the low 70s. 
70s later tonight with partly cloudy skies. Enjoy it because tomorrow and even into Friday going to be noticeably warmer when you step outdoors. Highs in the upper 80s expected Thursday and then even approaching that 90 degree mark on Friday. Then we see that next cold front move in Friday afternoon and especially Friday evening. After that, we'll start to see that drier air work back in, so it will be more comfortable as early as Saturday morning and especially this weekend. Nice weather, fall like weather, just in time for the annular eclipse that we were talking about a little bit earlier. All right, let's talk about that setup. You can see all of the rain that we were dealing with over the past 24 to 36 hours is now moving east. There's a little bit more across portions of the Pacific Northwest. This area of low pressure is going going to track eastward here in the next couple of days. Temperatures over there currently in the 50s. You can see as it moves into the central plains by Thursday afternoon, we'll start to see that front work its way into the state of Texas by Friday. It moves through south central Texas late Friday afternoon and into the evening. As of right now, we're really not expecting significant rain with this. We're expected to stay dry in San Antonio, maybe a stray shower closer to Eagle Pass in the Rio Grande and then after after that, windy conditions kick on as well. You can see for the eclipse on Saturday in the morning, even stretching into the lunchtime hour, wind gusts upwards of 25, maybe even 30 miles per hour will be possible, ushering in that cooler air. Here are those forecast low temperatures, humid on Friday near 70. And then after that, we start to see that cooler air take over. It's possible that lows back in the 50s return as early as Sunday morning, so cool and crisp weather just around the corner. We just have to get through the next couple of days first, guys. Yes, we do. Thank you so much. Coming up, what one family is doing to keep their son's memory alive this Halloween season. The couple who's behind a popular Halloween haunt in Helotus is now struggling with a real life tragedy. They lost their only son in a motorcycle crash just a few weeks ago. Jude Weber shows us how, even through their own pain, they plan to keep bringing happiness to others. This is how you enter. You go in. Rick Romano has it all planned out. Every sound. Every sight. And this area here, this is the witch's area. And every surprise. The Jack in a box will pop open. He jumps out. One thing he did not expect was doing all of this without his son by his side. 24-year-old Nicholas Romano, or as his family called him, Nick, was killed in a motorcycle crash last month. Nick was one of the kindest people you would ever meet. He was so kind. He was the life of the party. He's such a positive person. He was always wanting to help people. For years, this Helotus family has been helping to thrill local children, turning the outside of their home on trailing Fern Street into a haunting Halloween experience. This was our annual contribution that we love to do. They'd spend all year planning. Then Nick would use his skills in construction science management to bring it all together. No! <laughs> this was his favorite time of year. He loved doing this. He loved the creation. We were supposed to start setting up the day after he died. For an instant, they considered canceling this year, but an outpouring of love from others, some of them strangers, changed their minds. Even on this rainy day, friends showed up with helping hands, touching hearts. It's a community that's helping us deal with this tragedy, and we wanted to continue. Still, while the tradition will go on, the changes will be hard to ignore. For years, this has been known as the failed experiment cemetery, but this year Romano says he's changing the name in honor of his son. It's going to mount up on these trees here. So it'll say the Nick Romano Halloween adventure. It's just one way the family plans to keep his memory alive, while also giving others a chance to make some memories of their own. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Nick Romano's parents also planning to set up a scholarship in his name at UTSA, his alma mater. And they're going to open up their Halloween house, their haunted house to the public beginning this Saturday. So if you'd like some more details, you can check out the story on our website at ksat.com. All right. So looks like Friday the 13th coming a little early to SA Live. Is the clown yeah. gone? Please tell me the clown's gone. No. No. 
No. Look this way. Right here. Yes. Oh, yes, hi. that Thanks. is just a bit of a preview of what you'll see at the 13th floor, <laughs> if you dare. Okay, the noise he makes is really kind of creepy there. And there's something special coming up for Friday the 13th. And if that's not scary enough, you want something even scarier? Look what Avery's holding right now. Yes, that is a for real live a tarantula out there at Animal With World and Snake Farm. With the sweetest name ever, Harriet. Harriet, get oh, it? Harriet. yes, get it, Harry, Harry Tarantula. <laughs> and they have a big, big Halloween uh, sort of festival coming up. Absolutely, up and we're gonna and tell personal. you how kids can get in free. Yes, indeed, okay, so. Monsters, ghouls, goblins, the movie ones. Which one could you take? It's like, ah, no, I'm not gonna, no, this, no problem there. Any one of them? Mm, I would think Chucky, but he's kind of quick. I know. I know. Yeah. So let us know, scan that QR code. Movies, Which scary movie villain could you take in a fight? Okay, we need something to soothe us. Pizza, what's better than that? Kind of like comfort food. And Inga Stanfield from Matanga's Pizza is here, so just good old pizza, right? Good old pizza, and obviously we got banana and bacon. Bananas on Bananas? pizza? Bananas? That's right. It tastes divinely delicious, not so scary, actually, once you try it. Okay, it's not on their menu yet, but it's going to be served up at the Pizza Festival coming up here. And, and oh yes, hitting the stage is the musical Six, about the six wives of Henry VIII. We talked with one of the stars, and that and more coming up on SA Live.